without a gun, there's only one way I can meet your challenge. I'm waiting. Whenever you're ready. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Yes, hey boy. That Mr. Whitey had just here talking to you. Yeah. He must be very rich a man. Well, how's that? He give very small tip. <laughs> yes. He is rich, eh, boy? Disgustingly so, but maybe he feels a little pinched at the moment. He just lost $80,000. Oh, that's most awful mighty big lot of money. Are uh, he gambling man? No, he lost it in one of the most rugged mountain areas of the state. Oh, huh. I uh, see no me that pretty careless. He owns a mine up in the northern Sierras. One of his gold shipments, $80,000 worth, disappeared. How did this gold disappear? Nobody knows. There's only one narrow trail leading up to Mr. Whitehead's mine, and as far as they know, it's the only way in or out. The bullion left the mine, but never came out at the bottom of the trail. The gold, the guards, and the mules, they just vanished. Oh, that is very strange. It was a Wells Fargo mule train. Those animals are all branded. They can be recognized anywhere. They've been watching, expecting them to show up someplace, dead or alive, but so far, no one has found them. Indeed, most uh, mystifying. Yeah, it certainly is. Yes, sir. Oh, are you going to find gold for Mr. Whiteyhead? Well, he said I could name my own fee. Oh, oh Mr. Whiteyhead placed himself in position to receive most discomforting statements for his services or not. Hey, boy, if I find the gold, we'll make it a good one. And add a little extra to make up that tip for you. When I reached the snow-covered slopes of the Sierras, I rode for several hours through a maze of jagged cuts and gullies, leading nowhere, it seemed. Finally, in a narrow canyon, I came upon a pack train of mules, miserable, hungry, and half-frozen. They were not Wells Fargo mules, and they were not carrying gold bullion. But they were laden with food stores and ordinary mining equipment. Nearby, I found the body of a man, half buried in the snow. He had frozen to death. I thought the least I could do was take the mules on to a spot where they might find forage. So I led them out of the canyon and passed the snow drift. Come on. Come on, them you. Move. Move. Well, yeah. might well know there's guns on you from all sides. What's that? Stay right where you are. I'm coming down. Well, sure glad to see you. You gotta be Jake Seidel. I'm Frankie uh -huh. Bodine. Well. Sure good to see a friendly face. Uh, what's this about guns on me from all sides? That's right. My boys spotted around the rocks up here. I can't take no chances. You make one false move, blango. Well, I have no intention in making a false move. I, I guess you know that. How do I know? Rita says you're all right, but how do I know? I can't take no chances. Oh, sure. Sure, I understand. Now, you have any trouble following that map? A map? Well, I'm here. We couldn't get down yesterday, like we said. The storm. Uh, it, it worked out. We got no time to waste. But before we go up, just a couple of things. Now, your horse. What about my horse? There ain't a horse alive to make that trail ahead. We got a place for him hidden back in the canyon. He'll be all right. There's shelter, food. One of the boys looks after him. I see. And then, uh, 
Your gun. My gun? Well, you understand. Frida says you're okay, but I don't know you. I can't take no chances. Sorry, I'm not giving up my gun. Look, Seidel, I told you we got no time to waste. Now, just keep in mind it's your mules we need, not you. I always figure a deal's a deal, but I don't let that figure never get in my way. Joe? Yeah, boy. You take his gun and then search him good, see if he's got a knife hidden on him. No offense, Seidel. You see how it is, don't you? Yeah. I'm beginning to. Here's his gun, boss. Say, classic. <laughs> well, will you look at here? <laughs> a derringer. Well, da de da. Now, ain't that cute? Is that it, Joe? That's it. Well, Sidell, I guess we're ready to go. Bet you'll be glad to see Fleeter, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sure will. Joe, you and Petey bring up his pack train. We'll go on ahead. Sure, boss. Tell the other boys to follow the train. We gotta have everybody there to start loading. I got mule saddles for us, Sidell. We got a real tough trip ahead. Hope you're up to it. Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Frenchie Bodine had mistaken me for a man named Jake Sidell. And all I could do was to go along and hope for the right answer. I mounted the saddle mule he pointed out to me and followed Bodine up the canyon. About a mile further on, we seemed to reach a dead end, but he guided his mount through a mossy rock formation and motioned me to go ahead of him, and we started to climb. The trail was no more than a narrow ledge that twisted up along a sheer, craggy cliff. We rode silently. I had time to wonder about a lot of things, but... Most of all, I wondered if the trail would ever end. Hi, Dale. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah? Almost there. Good. Maybe you think it's kind of funny me bringing you in on this deal. Well, yes, I wondered about it. And me, I'm like that. You got something I want... I got something you want, so we make a deal. Old fan square. And you go your way, I go mine. That's the way I am. I can't argue with that. I never have any trouble. Say, the, the trail up ahead there looks like it drops off. <laughs> kind of scary, ain't it? Now, the trail goes on around and up to the top. We're going to make a sharp turn. And then you've got a surprise coming. The mule knows the way. You just hang off. Oops. Easy, 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 boy. Huh. Well. Sure is surprising, ain't it? You ever figure this canyon was up here? Never. Those rock walls go straight up 60, 70 feet, maybe. Huh? Pretty steep, ain't they? And on top, the flat. That's where we've kept the gold. That's where we're going to do the loading. Well, come on. Where now? Now we'll go see Frida. She's more than likely in the shack over there. Oh, yeah. Frida. Now, before we go inside, Dell, let me tell you, if this works out okay, there's no reason why you can't come in on the next deal with us. Of course, we'll have to lay low for a while, but I don't see no reason why we can't pull the same stunt again. Oh, I don't see why not, if it worked once. And you see from the flats up there, there's a hidden path on the other side that leads down to the Whitehead Mine Trail. Nobody knows about it. Shove a few rocks around, you can't see it, even when you know it's there. Huh, pretty clever. You pick your time, wait for them, push a few guns at them, before they know what's happened, you got the whole kit and caboodle up there on the flat. Mules, guards, and gold. Yeah, what about the guards? Yeah, we had a shoot then. You mean you just... You murdered them? Well, now, you can't get squeamish, Seidel, when you're playing for high stakes. I never had a chance at the big stuff before now, and I ain't letting anything get in my way. Of course, we had to get rid of the mules, too. They was all marked. And that's where I came in. Yeah. 
Frida told me about you and your pack train. That's when I got in touch with you. Nobody will ever know we packed that gold on your mule. Now, I couldn't tell you all this in that message I sent, but now you know. You know the whole thing. Yeah, well, I do, don't I? Yeah. Let's go. Maybe you think I'm a big blabbermouth talking too much. But that's the way I am. I lay it on the line. I still ain't taking no chances, see? Because I got the guns. I got your guns and I got my guns. I'm quite aware of that. But even if I didn't have the guns, I could still break you to pieces with my bare hands if I had a mind to. You've made your point quite clear, Frenchie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go on in. Rita? Yes? Well, here he is. Jake Seidel. Uh, it's um, good to see you, Frida. I... Well, now, now, what's the matter here? Frida's been saying how she couldn't wait to see her old pal from back there in Frisco. Well, now you both stand there acting like you never seen each other before. Well, ain't that the truth? Oh, Jake, you old horse thief. Give me a big hug. Well, Is that any way to treat an old friend? Yeah, uh, Rita... You are a friend. Oh, I'll bet you were worried about Frenchie. Frenchie's not jealous. Are you, Frenchie? No, I ain't jealous of an old friend. An old friend's good. I told Frenchie all about back there in Frisco, back when I was at the Hippodrome. Uh, what then was then, what now is now. Jake Seidel, what do you know? We've got a lot to talk about. Yes, we, we have. You know, when Frenchie needed the mules, I said... You just get in touch with Jake Seidel. There's a man you can trust. Well, thanks, Frida. Thanks for a feeling you can trust me. Uh, the mules will be coming in. I'll head them up to the flat. We'll go up by foot, Seidel. I'll show you the way in a minute. we got to get loaded. All right. Who are you? My name is Paladin. Oh, what happened to Jake? I don't know for sure. But I can guess that he was the man I found dead in the snow. Jake, dead? Well, I can only guess. Is he a good friend? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I needed him. Why are you here? Well, because it seemed the best way to stay alive. Hey, Tidell. Come on, let's go. He's calling you. Go on. Time to wait. If you get a chance, come back here. I want to talk to you. I'll try. Thanks again, Frida. special way up to the flats from the cabin was just a series of uneven and irregular footholds chipped into the side of the sheer rock cliff. When we reached the rim over 60 feet up, the men were coming up the trail with the mule train. Our job was to dump the loads of flour and blasting powder that the train had carried and refill the sacks with the gold ingots that were lined up in stacks by the ledge. Then the men loaded them back on the mules, along with picks and shovels and other mining equipment for a neat disguise. Then Bodine sent me down to let Frida know we had finished while he got the men and the train started back down the grade. When I got to the cabin, Frida was busy preparing supper. Is coming down? Yeah, in a few minutes. Did you know that gold up there belongs to the Whitehead Mining Company? What's that got to do with you? Well, I was hired by Mr. Whitehead to find that gold. No. Frida. Why did you protect me when I walked in this afternoon? Because I need you to help me. When Frenchie agreed to bring Jake up here, I thought that would be my chance. When you walked in instead of Jake, I decided I would have to take my chances with you. Will you help me? Help you to do what? To get away from here. Get me away from Frenchie Bodine. But somehow I thought that you and Bodine were married. No. I loved him once. That was before I knew what kind of a person he really is. I'm afraid of him. And I can't stand it any longer. You have to help me. But how? I haven't been able to figure out a way out of this myself yet. You won't live to get out of it if Frenchie has his say. Frida, have you got a gun here in this cabin? No, but I think I can get one for you while the men are eating. Frenchie! Well, uh, is that interesting? Frenchie? I'm obliged to you for leaving the door cracked. 
made it easier for me to hear what you two had to say. Frenchie, I... Nobody ever double-crossed Frenchie Bodine, not even you. Freak. Oh. Bodine. You stay out of this. Your turn's coming. No. No. Don't run, Frida. Don't run. Bodine, why you... Stay back or I'll shoot you too. No. I ain't gonna use this gun. Because it's going to do me more good to rip you to pieces with my hands. See, hands. <laughs> now, that's just the beginning. Get up. You come and get me, Bodine. I told you nobody double crosses me. <laughs> well, right now, it's your turn to get up, Bodine. You? Get out of the way, Paladin. No, Frida. Frida, you didn't have to kill him. Yes. Yes, I did. I knew I had to when I saw his gun on the floor. Waited until you were out of the way. Come on. Let me help you up. Oh, no. Frida, we've got to do something about that wound. Oh, I'm so tired. I'll patch your shoulder up, and once we get out of these mountains and get you to a doctor, you'll be fine. Oh, I don't. I don't think I can make it. All right, now. I'll carry you to the couch. Oh. Uh, now, easy. Oh. Easy. Now. There. more comfortable. Yes. You know, Frida? Frida. Yes. I was thinking about it this afternoon. I remember seeing you at the Hippodrome. You were the prettiest girl there. Mm -hmm. Frida? Frida? Think of any more expenses we can add on here, hey boy? Mm. Oh, pretty long list, Mr. Pardon. All right. Well, add that up on your abacus and let's see what we have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Oh, he's a seven thousand two hundred eighty-four dollar forty-nine cents. Uh, well, it seems to me Whitehead could go for ten percent to get his eighty thousand dollars back. Uh, we'll make it eight thousand even. Put down the difference to miscellaneous. Oh, he's a uh, miscellaneous, very big item on expense account. Well, don't forget I have to figure your cut. Ah, uh, so. Well, to make up for that small tip Mister Whitehead gave you. Oh, you very generous. <laughs> Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Parrott and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Walter Stalker, and Vic Perrin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.
Thank you.